Mr. Rev is saying there is a Sony Crunchyroll launches to plan nurture and anime studio for global audience. I don't think this is good news. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So today we're gonna do another round of topic parkour, where okay. we're gonna go from topic to topic, concisely covering various stories that I've gotten largely from Twitter over the past couple of days. Uh oh, that I think you guys Twitter. will be interested in. So we're gonna begin with Sony. There's been a lot of talk about Sony recently, especially with all the DEI type initiatives they've been forcing onto various DEI. video games. And what is DEI? Is that diversity and inclusion or something? And developers. But a lot of people are forgetting that there's another very important aspect of Sony that a lot of people are forgetting about. And that are they are they really calling them Sony? Instead of Sony, you call them Sony because they're just a bunch of fucking soy cucks that keeps, you know, decreasing their booba size and, and uh, censoring stuff. So we have the PC, we have the Switch, and we have the PlayStation. What's the blackboard and the PlayStation one going to be? Let's go. That's the fact that they have a hyper focus on anime style games, but in particular, mm. anime itself as well. And their influence on that has never been stronger because people continue to forget that sony now owns crunchyroll they have a direct right that was the whole was this is pretty recent i forget there was a whole bunch of stuff going on with like aniplex i'm i haven't really been well rounded in the studios and the different stuff be happening behind the scenes but i remember a whole bunch of shit happening and crunchyroll being able to kind of like quote unquote increase their prices in a really kind of predatory way as the competition decreased but okay so sony to launch academy to nurture anime creators in global markets surely this is gonna be a good thing for us guys right direct influence on crunchyroll which is basically the monopoly of anime streaming services right now so they have a big influence and okay. this article right here uh, is sharing some concerning developments involving sony crunchyroll so like the academy will aim to what does nurture mean surely you mean to make sure that all the different services are going to be enriched with resources so that the consumer's experience will be enhanced surely it's not going to be a race to the bottom right so now they have sorry <coughs> aniplex and crunchyroll with collaboration from across the industry aniplex is a subsidiary of blah 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 yeah 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 sony's funimation global group completed its acquisition that's where that happened in august 9 2021 last year right after the company, not last year, 2021, a couple years ago, first announcing the acquisition in December 2020, $1.175 billion to acquire Crunchyroll. Holy shit. And it was all paid in cash at closing? Maybe not. Funimation's home videos releases are now listed on the Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll released over 13 million paid subscribers to the anime streaming service at the end of December 2023. And I hear they also leaked a bunch of user information. And there was a huge leak with, you know, Crunchyroll episodes this season, remember? Like Konosuba, Demon Slayer, all that shit got released so early or leaked should i say now this is kind of surprising as wild as this might be it's been out for about two weeks and not many people are talking about this so okay. sony is going to launch an academy to nurture anime what does that mean though in global markets sony group corporation announced on tuesday during its annual corporate strategy presentation that it will launch an academy to develop talent to create anime we're gonna get more anime, guys! Oh my god! They're gonna launch an academy, and they're gonna give them such great work-life balance and resources, and everyone's gonna have such nice pay and nice hours, and we're surely not gonna get garbage anime that's, you know, used AI to develop, right? Are they... I don't know what their goal is, but, like, anytime you have big corporations getting their hands on stuff like art and, you know, things born from passion... Whenever things get very corporatized, it turns into something that's really sad. No longer can you taste or feel the love and the passion of the studio, but rather it's a skeleton crew getting squeezed to their fucking bones, trying to deliver a product that's only there to add, uh, act as advertisement while meeting the bottom line for the corporations and the consumers get fucked at the end of the day. The Academy will aim to nurture anime <laughs> creators nurture. in global markets mainly by Aniplex and Crunchyroll with collaboration across the industry. Anytime you're hearing anything like global markets, Ooh. you should be pretty concerned. Ooh. Nobody wants, no true anime fan or video game fan or what have you, wants their creators tailoring themselves for a global market because that sounds a lot like 
global audience or modern audience that we keep hearing about buzzwords from like sony and other dei initiatives and the products that come out of that are absolutely dreadful the yeah and like again sony's goal is not to make the best anime possible but to squeeze out an existing market and their audience and just make shitty rushed anime products to meet the bottom line and i feel like this might be bad news those initiatives are only for woke people and mainly screechers on twitter who want to change things that they have no real interest in in the first place but this is the kind of stuff we're talking about i'm sure this person right here is very ready for the nurturing of anime creators so this tweet managed to get over thirty thousand oh likes recently oh boy this. Trying to watch an anime from the 2000s, but there's too much. What's he watching? The Naruto, was Naruto full of all the shit? I mean, the first line, you know, the Alabama themes. Listen, that's apparent in like every anime. Now, while it might not be explicitly done, right? Some animes literally explicitly does that. Most of the animes recently, honestly, this is still common. Like, it's, it's a very common theme. Uh, jokes on the P word. Um, there. Ooh, ooh, we shouldn't talk about we should good tense here stuff like that. But like, I've seen black. I have not seen blackface. Transphobia. I don't think that's. It. I don't think there's any sort of trans representation in anime from the recent ones that I've seen. Actually, homophobia. No. Back in the day, I mean, this is an anime from the 2000s, right? But like, was there? Fat jokes? Probably. I don't think that's a big deal as much. Essay jokes? Anime itself is just essay. How many times you got a girl fucking running out the door, she trips down with the fucking toast in her mouth, oh, and falls over a guy, and suddenly it's in 69 position with the panties covering his face. Like, it's, I'm sorry, it's just how horny anime people are. Incest, pedo jokes, blackface, transphobia, homophobia, fat jokes, stuff about Hitler for some reason, and essay jokes. 32,000 likes. Uh, maybe have you can- <laughs> Haven't I heard? Not having trans representation in every anime is transphobia? Goddamn. You got me. You got me. Checkmate. You're right. If they're not doing something pro, then that means they must be against it. You're right. I mean, most of the times on Twitter, right? It's more like- you can say, I like waffles, and then other people will then infer negative things about that, saying, you hate pancakes? It's like, no, I didn't say that. I did not say that. I, you say one thing, and other upset people will then say something completely different and start to antagonize you, even though you didn't say anything. Consider that anime is just not for you. And also, let's keep this in mind. This entire list of complaints about anime from the 2000s would be applicable to basically any form of media Show. across the board. Not just anime, and singling I've tried. out anime as some special and extra problematic thing is, well, typical Twitter behavior. But look at some of the people agreeing with this. This user replying, saying this. Star I started watching Full Metal and I was not prepared for the racism. We haven't watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood just yet in this channel, but like, is there racism there? Straight, straight up? Racism happens in every anime, though. Not every anime. Let me take that back. But a lot of the animes, the isekai animes happening, like, what is the most common theme with isekai? Fucking racism, right? Haku, thank you for the prime sub, my man. I appreciate that. Very generous of you. But like, what? I, you go into an isekai, and then suddenly, oh, it's this specific race. I hate them. Humans hating demons. That's pretty much racism. You could say speciesism. I, I, I don't know. I feel like you're going kind of too crazy saying the enemies are being racist when two different races are at odds against each other what are you saying and i bet you if you actually watch full metal and i haven't and maybe i'm talking to my ass but if you actually did right if you actually watch full metal and try to understand the story of it maybe the racism part while it was racist at the end of the day there's positive commentary and themes about that and how things could be better in the future to coexist in peace there's no way full metal is straight up pro racism right started watching full metal and i was not prepared for the racism dear god they're canceling full metal in the year 2024 don't you fucking try my anime list. Listen, Frieden is still somehow a number one in my anime list. I thought the Full Metal Brigade would come down like they do always on anime list, but you don't want to fuck around with them, bro. I think my head's gonna explode, but 
There is one good result in the situation. Tourist gatekeeping. Another group of tourists Bushy. have been filtered. And that is the best thing that anime <laughs> has ever really done when it comes to gatekeeping. That is self-gatekeeping, okay? The content for a long time has produced its own self-gatekeeping effect, keeping people away. And that's why this push towards modern audiences and censoring things is concerning because it's weakening the gatekeeping effect of anime. And it's allowing a bunch of screechers to have more influence on what's being produced and how things are being censored and Spits distributed facts, to King. audiences generally. And that should concern you. So gatekeeping people very positive thing especially when they're trying to change your hobbies and mediums but now moving on netflix. to netflix we have a couple of developments involving netflix both involving well what anime question mark so the only thing uh oh netflix has announced an american live action adaptation of kakegurui and if we look at kakegurui Y'all know it's the gambling waifu anime, right? Yeah, okay, so basically like... <laughs> here, let me show you this. Let me go to here. So this is what's going on, right? This this is the representation of the girls in this show. So a, it looks like Food Wars, where the girls are like orgasming off of eating food, but instead it seems to be off the high of a gamble, is my understanding of this show. And now they're introducing, I guess, diversity cast. You have probably Asian, half Asian, black, Spanish speaking. I don't know. But obviously you don't see like all Asian girls. Therefore, they're trying to push a DEI incentive. The only, the only thing that I hate about Netflix and anime is how they treat the, what's it called? How they treat the bulk releases. Because whenever Netflix took JoJo's, I think, like part five, didn't that like, or part six was it? It's, it's not Steel Ball Run, but uh, with Jolene. They, didn't, they did like a batch release and it just flopped like crazy, right? Every time Netflix starts to release animes in an entire batch, I feel like everybody just either isn't aware of it or the hype just dies down. And it's not an outlier. It's happened to like every time. It's poor management of keeping the current you know audience entertain we eat we like each week after week having to know like oh next episode's gonna be so good next you know next week and constantly having that but if you do a batch release i feel like it really hurts the anime that, that's so my here's first, the first netflix, one anyways a lot of people are talking about this headline so netflix has announced an american live action adaptation of kake gururi story yep. below here so this is the cast all right of the upcoming honestly I don't really give a fuck if they, like, quote-unquote typecast or do diversity casting. As long as the final product is good, that's all I care about. Like, do I care that a black person is in Kakigurui, which is supposed to be all Japanese girls? Like, I don't give a fuck. Just give me a good product. That's what I really care about. I mean, Kakigurui, live-action adaptation. Live-action and good is kind of like a contradiction, though, huh? Li what live-action anime was good? I heard the One Piece live-action was actually pretty good. But other than that, you hear live action anime, people are like, oh dear God, who asked for this? Uh, well, I, I can say the obvious here. They don't look a lot like the, the cast of the anime. That's, that's for sure. I, Which, of course, yeah. in American live action, uh, I guess that's what they're going for. It, really, the main question is, why? Why are they doing this? That's a good question. I never understood why they keep pushing for live action and also doing these diversity casting that makes people upset. Even you see Romeo and Juliet right now. Y'all know what's going on with Romeo and Juliet. Like um, Tom uh, and Juliet. Um, there's a lot of uh, like, like this is what Romeo and Juliet is a long time ago, right? Y'all remember this shit, right? It's like a, a love story. I never actually read it, but everyone knows of it. But then it's like um, 2024 or something, right? Suddenly, because they put in, you know, actors that doesn't represent what they knew of Romeo and Juliet. And let's get serious, right? I am not the best looking person. I am an objectively 6.9 out of 10 on a good day. But Romeo and Juliet, I feel like they intentionally included an actor that is not as appealing to the wider audience as what Juliet they know from the past. And by doing so, they create outrage and 
makes people talk about the show and by doing so does that then prop up the numbers and sales is that what they're trying to do wasn't there an also an issue with the show called velma back in the day right wasn't there something about velma where um because it was so fucking bad the authors was also nagging on twitter also shitting on the haters right even if the hater was uh justified or whatnot because of the outrage the eyes were on the product and therefore views went up is that the strategy they're going for i am not sure what their real game plan is and it's reflected in a lot of the comments here's the top comments uh saying huh no one asked for this and this comic here saying that's a nice ip you have there it would be a pity if someone dedicated or decided to make an adaptation that is always a terrifying and here's the thing I don't think that these corporations and companies making live action anime actually gives a fuck about the IP. Their goal is to make as money as much much money as possible. And if money is the driving factor, and even if these and we know how bad live actions are, they must be making money out of it, right? That's the only thing that matters to them. Why would they continue pursuing failed projects over and over again? That's insanity. That must mean that even if it's rece received so poorly, it must have been profitable, right? Thing. Netflix in particular making a live action adaptation overall in their history uh they seem to be improving at least with the one piece adaptation at least that's a step in the right direction yeah, I heard that was pretty but good historically Netflix live action adaptations of anime are dreadful absolutely dreadful like cursed level of dreadful so when you hear that a series is getting that you should be concerned and and pity those who enjoy that IP. But here's another comment saying, Pity so those. how will they deal with the fact that in Kakiguri, you're, you become an actual slave if you lose hard enough? Is that why they did it? Is, is that why they included black actors? There's no way. There is no way that you're going to have one of these characters literally be a slave imagine the outrage there's no way they would do that right that's crazy now that i think about it holy fuck what are they cooking up pity those who enjoy that i we're trying this comment is definitely pretty accurate to the lore of this franchise in fact for years and years a lot of journalists including feminists were trying to cancel this franchise okay. because of some of these aspects of the story so Such here's as? an article an example of this saying those who can't quite cut it form the lowest of the low the house pets of the school they have corresponding collars and tags this is getting kinky as fuck are you sure this is about gambling are you sure this is, it sounds like they're stripped of their humanity and dignity and they're just forced to walk on the floor on all fours if they lose gambling and, it, and you gotta be a little like what this is collars and tags so that no matter what no one forgets who and what they are okay. now given the cast yeah given the cast the action they might want to be careful who they are assigning as the there's no way the black actors are gonna be slaves right they gotta be the masters and then the other asian girls she's gotta be the slave because if you swip it around and maybe that's why they didn't include white actors in this. Oh my god. Could you imagine where the white actor is the master? And then, you know, holy shit, what are they cooking up? House pets and putting leashes on and things like that. You know, subjugating. Oh, no, 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 no. thought it was bad in the anime. No, 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 no. Cancel depending on who they put in that situation for the live action. Like... It's one of those things like so woke, it's gonna end up being offensive to people. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. it went full circle. It's like, all right, guys, racism bad, right? Can everyone say racism bad? Easy, racism bad, right? How do we combat racism? We need more black representation in live action anime. You're onto something. All right, let's put them in. All right, now, what are we gonna do in a show where if people lose, they become slaves? Let's have those same black actors become slaves. Huh. Maybe we should do that. And then suddenly, because you try to be so inclusive and woke, you became racist. You, can't, you went fucking full circle.
It's like a fucking plane of existence where it's like if you go to right wing, you come out of the fucking left, you go all left wing. If you go all to the fucking left, you come out of the fucking right. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. We see this all the time. But moving on to some Tomb more Raider. Netflix related news. Lara like Croft. I said, more anime? Okay. News, question mark. So it was announced that there is a Tomb Raider anime that will be released. Are you guys hyped for this? Tomb Raider anime? Are you, are you guys want to, Should we be covering this? In October, October on Netflix. A Tomb Raider anime. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that. That's me scratching my head. That's a bit confusing. It's a uh, Tomb Raider I know is Lara Croft who has triangle titties back in the PS1 version. I've never played those games, but can they make an anime out of that? I don't know. Using, you know, you can see from the comments, people are also confused saying anime in parentheses. Tomb Raider anime, look inside. Western animation style from Austin, <laughs> Texas. We need a new word for Western anime. These whiteys are fucking making anime. How dare they? <laughs> because it's such a... I mean, you have like a Suicide Squad anime isekai happening, right? I think that's not very anime, but they've made it. I'm willing to give it a chance if it's actually good. Animation. Another dope anime that will take Netflix four years to release a second season. That's also true. Wah, wah. But uh, yeah, this is kind of weird. They just seem like they're they're basically calling anything that's a, a Western styled, Western produced comic or uh, animation style, and they're just slapping anime onto it, which I think is for an obvious reason. Like, let's call it a fucking cartoon, my man. What considered is it an anime versus a cartoon? Tomb Raider, I feel like, should be a... You gonna have Japanese voice actor voice act this shit? Arcane, I would consider an animation that is not from Japan. Well, it depend At the end of the day, I think it boils down to the semantics of what an anime really is. If you go to Japan, they don't call anime anime. They call it animation. And because they're from Japan, whatever animation is made from Japan, it's made into anime, right? Now, if you have an animation from America, it's obviously not the same way as an anime that we know. Different wording, I think, categories would have to be correlated. But if anime is literally tied to Japan, then it's not anime, of course, right? You need to call something else. But I just know that the Japanese people, they call it animation. And it's just whatever's produced from Japan is animation. And we call that anime, but I'm not sure if the semantics of the official definition of what an anime is is tied to Japan. If it is, then this is... What do we call it? It's a fucking cartoon? I guess the word anime has a bigger pull than cartoon, right? Anime is growing at a great rate and becoming more and more global and attaching anime and labeling something as anime is typically going to be a benefit. So I think I know why they're doing this, but still it's just pulling from the weeds and seems right like, by again, using they're, they're anime basically in it. trend hopping by labeling this an anime but moving on to another somewhat different set of oh this is totally off topic but uh twitch council is reportedly terminating all members of its safely uh safety advisory council so each member were paid 20 grand a year to do fucking shit all i remember there was this furry who was super into horses or deers that was doing power tripping and doing some shit that was really bad and just made a fool of themselves. I remember this drama. Out of topics to end this video. So this was something I thought was interesting. Uh, coming out of Twitch, reportedly, they are terminating all members of its safety advisory council. They have not done a single fucking significant thing to make Twitch better. All they've done is collect that 20k paycheck and did shit all. I'd say they did more harm than good. Did you guys hear about that drama with the with the person on the council who loves deers and was like neighing and doing like horseplay and shit? Which uh, great, uh, rare Twitch W. Okay. Nothing that sounds like this has ever been a good thing, okay? We all know this, and the janitors like this are a waste of time, okay? Straight they're up, they are. They're power hungry, they're annoying, and typically, the types of people representing movements like this are the most annoying and yeah. woke people you'll ever see. Who you need...
you can't have moderators who want power. You can't have moderators who even want to be moderators. That's the thing. Whenever in these powers of leadership where you have so much influence, the best type of people for those positions are people that don't want that position. It sounds counterintuitive, but like people who want to be moderators, people that want to force rules and, you know, things upon you and have that power over you. Those are the most dangerous people to even give them power. Who can forget one of the earliest members yeah, this guy, yeah, of this, this person. safety council? I forget this person's name. The dear but this girl. This was a thing back in 2020. It feels like this is ancient history. It was only a few years ago where one of the people on this uh, council was someone who identified as a deer. Yep. They deer identified sexual, baby. as a deer and Hooves. live on stream Hooves. had what they described as a deer orgasm. Yeah, Your I sex. said the word. Yeah, I actually said that. I feel. I feel like I need to go yep. brush my teeth or, or, or rinse Play the out clip. my mouth with something. Play the clip. Saying that, but that was something that really happened. This was one of their earliest hires for this whole movement, and uh, yeah, it was a disaster back then. People were clowning on this nonstop, and rightfully so, because this. Listen, I don't care what you do behind the scenes. That you know, after after at work, right? You want to fucking dress up in a deer suit and have your deer gasms? Do whatever you want to do. It's none of my business to care about what you get off to. Everyone can get off to whatever they want. It's just when you have people like this who's like supposed to be the safety council team putting this shit in public, it's just a very bad look overall. This was an absolute clown show. And also, of course, you could probably predict this person hated gamers. And that was supposed to be the safety council for gamers. It was an absolute joke. It's mind -boggling. But look at the timing. I mean, this is like two months into COVID. So it, it hit some people a little bit harder back then. Like they lost their sanity extra hard. <laughs> the most sane person during the lockdown. The lockdown, I think, did just like melt people's brains. When COVID hit and they were locked indoors. But, anyways, here is the last story I want to share for this video. Some pretty cool news, honestly. Okay. So, random Mr. Six Beast years, news? Mr. Beast has avenged PewDiePie. All right. Yeah, you guys remember the T-Series versus PewDiePie? I, I think we're getting a little bit off topic. I really only cared about the anime stuff. Like, good job, Mr. Beast. Like, good for you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that he did that. But I, I was honestly here just for the Crunchyroll, like, launches plans to nurture anime studios. But I see what Rev does. He baits me in with the most fascinating news and keeps me around for the other news. But it was pretty fascinating to see, you know, that Sony has so much power over everything right now and is going to create this nurturing and nourish our, you know, resource-deprived anime studios so we can make even more content. Maybe that this is a good thing. Most likely it's a bad thing. But hey, go give Rev a like. Sub to his channel if you haven't. I'd like to do more content like this on YouTube where it's just unedited, raw. Just I just start reacting to videos and hopefully my commentary can carry. If y'all enjoyed it, give me a like and show up on stream. I'll see you next time.